Crazy Uncle Mike's is a newly opened brewery in Boca Raton. It's more than a brewery, restaurant, and live music venue. It is the home of Fun Dining, a relaxed and unpretentious brewery with great beer, unexpectedly awesome food, and a wide range of live music. The decor is eclectic and comfortable. The beer is cold and delicious. The food crafted for quality. So pop in and enjoy Crazy Uncle Mike's. Now here's the CEO of Viteri Vibes and your host for Vibrations, Sandy Viteri. And here we are at Crazy Uncle's Mike. And of course, everybody has a crazy uncle or aunt in their family. And I have to ask you, where did that name come from? I'm fortunate to be from a giant family. Okay. I have eight brothers and sisters and uh, they have been prolific in recreating children. I have 22 nieces and nephews, and when I was young, I was long-haired, motorcycle riding, bar owner, and all my nieces and nephews loved me and called me Crazy Uncle Mike because I'd come and have a good time and always wow. light up the party. You have opened, you were mentioning about seven between restaurants and nightclubs. You were born an entrepreneur, and that is why we're here today. We want to talk about your entrepreneur DNA. Why don't we actually take you back in time and why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your businesses and how you started. Well, I, uh, I would like to think it was a great story, but it's pretty simple. <laughs> I was young and I, I loved to throw parties. I loved the music. And as a high school kid, I kind of liked beer a little bit before I was supposed to. <laughs> so I started throwing keg parties and found out that I was very good at putting together events that people love to go to and enjoy themselves at. And uh, so at a very young age, I started working the bar business at 21. By 24, I was opening my first bar, and I opened up a punk rock nightclub down in Albuquerque, New Mexico that was called Beyond Ordinary. Wow. And uh, it ended up getting picked up by MTV as one of the best nightclubs in the country based on what we were doing with it. We had, we had three rooms. We had live music in one room, a DJ in one room, and we had an art gallery in another. So it was very interesting to see the business people in the art gallery looking through a glass wall watching the punk rock kids with slam dancing with mohawks, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was a gathering of all humans. It was really, really neat. And uh, so from there, I was evolving into restaurant designs. I did uh, sports bars with live music. But and, hold on, and, hold on. Don't go so fast because right. I am sure there is a lot of, you know, very young entrepreneurs that would like to know. I mean, obviously at 24, you know, you just graduated from um, college. How do you go about, you know, the idea of coming up with a business? I mean, obviously you were drinking beer, you were partying, but how do you go about getting the money? you know, and actually getting people to help you and getting the resources and, and getting everything that you needed in order to be able to open a business and be successful at it. Well, that's actually a kind of fun story. Um, don't get to tell it often, but being young, I was 24 years old when I was going to open my first bar and my father was supportive of it, but his banking relationship was not Mr. Reagan at the bank was like, Pat, don't make a loan for him. Don't make it's crazy. He'll lose all your money. Don't do it, you know? Uh -huh. and, uh, so my dad, and I, I ride a Harley Davidson, and I've been riding it since I was 18. And uh, so he tells me, he goes, Mike, I'll co-sign a loan for you. And we did a $25,000 loan, granted, very small loan. And, uh, but at the time, you probably it was big. Well, it wasn't, still, it wasn't big. It wasn't enough to do what I needed, but it was the only way I was able to get the next loan, right? Okay. So I had to prove myself, get that paid back, and then I get the next one. So, but he made me park my motorcycle inside of my bar, or made me park it, not ride it. So I used it as, as a display uh -huh. in the restaurant, in the bar for the first year until I paid off the loan. <laughs> and, uh, so, but we, we basically got friends together. I had one friend that owned a stereo store named Roger. He, he brought the sound system on and let me pay him in time. I had another guy that was a welder and he came down and as long as I had Coors Light there at night, he would weld all night long and build the place for me. The electrician was the same way, but he liked Budweiser. So <laughs> I had a case of Budweiser and a case of Coors Light, basically built my first bar, you know, every night. You know, it was, uh, it was friends doing what, what we were all excited about doing because we were young and wanted something for us. You know, there was all the, all the bars and restaurants were really designed for the people that were more conservative and less fun. And so we wanted something that was, you know, a little bit nuttier and played the music we liked. You were doing it with passion. It was, and yeah. it still is. It's, yeah. it's funny because it's like the people, the music is what gets me. Mm -hmm. And seeing people digging what we're doing makes me, you know, excited about feeling successful. Right. My success comes through seeing people enjoy it. Right, right. So go on then. Then after that one, then you got the loan and then what happened? Well, that bar did real well. It was uh, 88, 89 when we opened it. Um, 
and it, it, it flourished. We, we kept it going until 2000, and, I mean, until 96, and I sold the business, but not the building. Mm -hmm. And so that business continued um, for, for quite some time in that building. Um, and in that process, I opened up another place called Time Out. It was a sports bar, um, full kitchen, and live music as well. I was a commercial real estate broker for quite a while, so mm -hmm. I learned the business from the real estate end of it, and I represented a lot of national chains and helped them get their, uh, their site acquisitions as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I kind of learned the business from all aspects as I was growing through the business, you know, as I was in it. I, right. I was learning different directions. Right. Um, and then I uh, started doing some things with groups. So I would put together the funding through friends and we would open other places. So I opened up a, a pizza joint that was uh, like a gourmet pizza place called Sauce. And mm -hmm. in the back was a restaurant called L Liquid Lounge. And it was real vibey, you had DJs all day and night. It was kind of like that uh, Buddha lounge kind of vibe in that room. So and you were changing a little bit the direction that you were going. You were still within the entertainment and restaurant, but you were changing a little bit. Was there a reason? What we were doing was developing an area. So uh -huh. our, our goal was to make downtown Albuquerque something spectacular and something fun to go to and safe to go to. Okay. And uh, so we were working with the city, with the, with the, the mayor and with the council and with developers bringing in movies, movies theaters and restaurants and, and housing and we were trying to develop the develop area. Develop the yeah. area. So it was, what we were also doing was investing in the area where the, the, the different styles of restaurants was to mm -hmm. give diversity to our own space and what we were doing. So again, developing more of what we were missing or what we liked that wasn't in our area. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we learned from other, other businesses that we enjoyed and we would replicate or change a little bit and then make right. our own. So the way that I see it then from my perspective is you were thinking about your community. You were thinking about what they were missing, what you liked, and you were bringing that to them. Sure. Was there any point in time where you felt any fears as you were going and moving in all these different directions? I don't know fear. Um, you calculate your risk and you, you, uh, you, know, you look at it, you run your numbers, you do your business plans. Um, and they're all based on guesses and, you know, and, and, and presumptions. And then when you get operating, you make adjustments to finish what you thought was going to happen to what you were actually doing. Um, but fear probably wasn't <clears throat> a factor. I mean, there's some nervousness when you're getting going and the first few months aren't as busy as you would like them to be. And almost every business that I've opened has a similar pattern. Mm -hmm. We open, we figure it out, then we market and we grow. So now let's move into the why. Um, so why were you pursuing um, all these different uh, restaurants and businesses and, and entertainment in the, within the entertainment industry? I love entertainment. I love music. I love live music. I don't play an instrument. I've been producing shows. Yeah, we were looking at those I've and been I was playing, asking I've been producing shows yours? my entire life, but don't play an instrument. Just love, the, love live performance and believe that music moves me, makes me happy when I'm sad, it makes me dance when I'm tired, it makes, you know, it does positive things for me. Mm -hmm. So I use music in my life. I get up in the morning, I turn on music. I come to work, I turn on music. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have music on now because we're doing this, but typically yeah. there would be music be playing right now because it drives my day, it makes my life. Mm -hmm. So I always involve music into my businesses and the, the tying in of those two, liquor and, and music go hand in hand. Sometimes food's mandatory to do it right. Well, you've been successful at it. I mean, you've been doing it for many years and you carry on all throughout your entertainment and you're actually entrepreneur, right? right. So when setting up your businesses, um, what have you learned that you have applied throughout the years? When I was in my 20s running bars, I was participating as a bar patron more then than I do today, right? <laughs> I can um, see that. <laughs> so. So I think that if there was anything I implemented, I just, I, I, uh, I keep work work, even though it's still fun, and then I play outside of work, whereas I think we used to intermix them a little bit more. How this business style, business life has affected you or helped you? I took the whole family from Vegas to the Bahamas. We kept our so home you've in been Vegas. all over. Yeah, so we were doing a project in the Bahamas for about 18 months. Okay. And the family was there, kids were in school there, it was great. Um, and when that was that that business was ending, family went back to Vegas, and I got offered that job in Punta Cana. Okay. And so it, I went and looked at the area. It didn't seem like it was a great place to move my family again to, and, and put them in a new environment that was a lot less comfortable. Right. And so my wife loved Boca. 
my kids have great schools in Boca. So right. we were like, well, it, I, have an, I have an office in Miami and in Punta Cana at the time. So I was like, all right, so I'll go take the job in Punta Cana. We'll try it out, see how it works. We'll get you guys to Boca where you want to be anyway. Mm -hmm. And then we can continue on. After a little while, we realized that time away from each other was difficult. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though I was here, you know, part of the time, it just wasn't what we wanted. We love each other. Like, <laughs> we actually want to be together. And that is so. where I wanted to get to. For entrepreneurs out there that are thinking about opening a business and at a personal level, because obviously we all put a lot, you know, a lot of our time, a lot of our effort. And, um, you know, at times we, perhaps I put our family, you know, not first. Sure. And we need to take those things and put it into a balance, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so what would you say to them? Don't get in the restaurant business. <laughs> <laughs> and here is somebody who's been in the restaurant business for his whole life. <laughs> and, and I have a wonderful family. And, and, and yes. fortunately, <laughs> they, they participate. My yes. oldest daughter works here now. Yeah. And, uh, my wife comes in and she's a partner and also helps and participates in, you know, operations a little bit. Of, she's also a real estate broker here in Boca um, with Sotheby's. So I, she doesn't spend a lot of time here, but she does get to come in and spend time. And so from a standpoint of, I spend a lot of my days here, they get to come and participate with me. And so it's, it's okay like this. Being in a different city is not okay. So being home. Um, why don't you tell me about now the decoration? You decided to put this, um, lamps here that have monkeys what what is it with the monkeys <laughs> all right so actually there's a couple of things with monkeys they're in barrels okay so barrels and monkeys are always they go hand in hand uh -huh. the artist that i asked to do this is named punk really really great artist folk, folk artist okay and uh, when i told him what i wanted he goes i'll do it but i'm going to make the monkey face because they're in barrels and i'm like that's ah, even better let's make a monkey face rock stars so we've got the generations of music represented from the rat pack through some punk rock through country through through Latin, through reggae, rock and roll, they're all represented in those barrels. And, and mm -hmm. it's kind of the influences of music that influenced me the most through my life, and I put them up in there. So a lot of the things that you see in here, I think are artistic pieces of, of what I put together. My, my art is creating the space and, and doing that. So the wood on the stage, the wood on the bars, the wood outside, that was all collected after Hurricane Irma. So the Hurricane was nice enough to knock down a bunch of fences in the neighborhoods and uh, they were all left field. outside and so we took them and re refurbished them. Our menu's eclectic, our, our music lineup's eclectic, our design's eclectic and, and it's just a place that's comfortable. You know? I it's, love it's the It's like place. home. All right, now if you had an audience in front of you full of entrepreneurs, what advice would you tell them? I think if you do what you love doing, there's not a day of work. You know, you get up and you want to go where you're going. You, you're not like, so people are like, oh, I, I gotta work 10 hours a day. And, and they complain about that, then they're not in the right business, right? If they're working like 18 hours, they're like, man, look what I did last 18 hours. That's the guy that's gonna love this business because yep. time, is, time is really irrelevant to your goal. Well, thank you so very much. It thank was you. a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure meeting you too. Crazy Uncle Mike. <laughs> and cool. where can people find you? 6450 North Federal Highway, just uh, north of Jeffries on Federal Highway in Boca Raton. Google us. Yes, Google. Yes. So you and can get us right there. It'll bring you right to our front door. And better stop by for some beer. And they by the way, beer. what we didn't talk about is this place is a brewery. We yes. make our beer. We've got a great brewer named Corey Wilson, and he's amazing, and he makes some fantastic beers. So <laughs> come try our beers. So. There you go. The best beer here. Come yeah. over. <laughs> Thank you. Now, we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.